So the tracker took its cameras outside. We are the Swiss Spirit Alisa Hotel. Um, the hotel is fully open for business now with all COVID-19 protocol in check. So you can come out here with your friends, your family, enjoy the ambience, enjoy good food, and have a great time out here. My guest today on the show is a special one. He has been all over Europe uh, applying his trade. Um, he's also uh, played for the Black Stars at the World Cup. He's seen it all as far as the professional game is concerned. Today, we'll be talking to him about his story and his journey. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, I'll introduce my guest and then we'll get the conversation on the road. So Lee Adi is our guest on the tracker today. Lee, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Now, in the last AFCON, we had a situation like that, a situation that had to do with communication because basically, Kwesi Apia wanted to remove Asamoah Jan as his captain and put Andrea Yu in there as his captain. And that decision ended up not sitting too well with Jan, who was a substantive captain. Now, I, when I spoke to Akamenko, he says that Ghana lost that AFCON before we even got on the plane to go to the competition because the team was already split and there was already bad blood. Do you feel as if, one, um, captaincy needs to be an issue where they are, some, we say that this guy has his people, this guy has his people. Um, if you make this guy captain, you are breaking the team. Do you feel as if we need to take a proper stance with that particular matter, decide who is captain and move with it? And uh, secondly, do you also feel as if we made a mistake by removing Jan as captain for that competition? I've answered your question. This question, I've just answered it right now. <laughs> you have to be strong. Mm. You have to know the decision you are taking. Yeah. You know the kind of people you are working with. Mm -hmm. You know their character. You know them. So you don't make any decision to bring uh, confusion in them. Football is unity. Football is love. Football is togetherness. Yeah. The national team, we don't have anything. We only have unity. We only have love. I remember the first time, like the first year I started playing the national team. Mm -hmm. I mean, the man called me and told me that, I mm -hmm. but he said, but national team, but I don't know about them because the men are national team, we are on the club side. Mm -hmm. The happiness, the joy, your friendship, everything you had, you will not get it. Sure. So if you are coming to the national team and splitting these boys, what do you think will happen? Did you talk about, did you, did you talk about the decision you are coming to make? It, it, the, your, this question, I've answered it all. You have to be bold. Hmm. The spirit and everything will not kick the ball for you. You have to kick the ball. If they say they will, they will go in terms of ahead, uh, do do and stuff like Benin and this, they, 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 they should they have won multiple work tournaments by now. Indians, they, but those things is your mind. Mm. There, are, there, are, there, are, there are areas which you say, okay, these things will work. There. But football, when yeah. you kick it, it will go. Hmm. If you kick the ball, it will go. You can say, okay, then we'll go to the spiritual, we'll not train, we'll let's sit down. When the time comes, then go and play. Who will win? The people who are training, they will win. Let's talk about the World Cup. World Cup 2010, South Africa. Now, let, that, let me come. Uh -huh. I, I, let me set this, this, uh -huh. this straight. Uh -huh. I'm not supporting Jan. I'm not supporting Dede. I believe that they have, uh, they have the heart, they have the quality to lead. Mm. Jan have the same thing. Jan's own is Jovia. He yeah. can bring you together by, yeah. by, by cracking jokes. They, they have this, they have, it's like the rule of the father. Yeah. These two people, when you combine them, you can make a solid team. This one was there before this one came. If you want to make a decision, yeah. a huge decision like this, don't call this one, don't call. Bring them together, see them with dignities, big people. Talk to them one on one. They are human beings, they will believe you. Call their parents, call them together because this is the nation. It's mm. something. Call the family together. This is what we want to do. We don't want to bring conflict between this one because yeah. this one is leading, this one is there, this one have the. It's, but this is what I'm bringing in into. Let's solve it in this room and let's go home. But if you tell this guy and tell this guy, but almost the day will tell his father, but almost Asama will tell his elder brother. 
will turn his father. And do you know what will happen? Ah, I didn't know your captain here, you flew him. I didn't cry here, call you here, you captain, I flew him. Okay, they will say, okay, okay, they are giving me captain. It's an opportunity for me to lead the country, to, to lead the country. I will also be proud. Yeah. Okay. What does uh, John have and I don't have? Mm. You get me? So the, the big men, they, they have experience there, which they have to call them together. I don't know what they did, mm. but for me, I think they have to call them, not only them, but call their parents, call their leaders, yeah. and call the dignities in the countries. Tell them that this is what I want to do. We want to come. The nation wants to come. Yep. This is a strong or uh, big decision I'm going to do. And if I don't take it very well, it's going to affect all of us. So let's sort it together. And I think this one, these things, we lost that this thing, this, it will not happen. Because then it was Stephen Apia who, who, who was the captain. Mm -hmm. is supposed to be captain, he got injured. Uh, uh, John Mensah came. Sule Montari, them, everybody is there. John Pente, yeah. everybody is there. Suddenly, they put all of them out. If you watch the other countries, they have senior place. Germany, look at a huge, like, big country like Germany. Yeah. If they are going to call national team, one person can sit here and tell you that I can call 15 or 16 players who are going to be called. Yeah. They only change 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Yeah. Two, two, one. Yeah. But Ghana will always change selection. No, what, is, what are we doing? This is not for a record, but this is national thing. Uh, players or a couple of players supposed to play for concert like some time before you change. It's not for a couple of people, but one group will go. It's supposed to be group. a steady pool yes. at least. Mm. Mm. Hold your horses there again. We'll be getting into Brazil. No, not Brazil. We'll be getting into World Cup 2010. This is, is, a, is a sad moment for a lot of Ghanaian fans when they think about the 2010 World Cup, but <laughs> we'll be getting a lot more into detail about that. You are still watching the tracker here on City TV. Um, you heard the Adi there breaking down a lot of things with regards to leadership in the national team and what's not. When we come back, we'll take a few steps and try to relive that moment and let him tell us what it felt like being in the midst of that particular situation. Stay right here with us. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. We are still speaking to Black Stars defender Lee Adi. Lee, let's talk about the 2010 World Cup. Now, all Ghanaians think about that game against Uruguay. Look, I was in town that day to watch that game. I can tell you that literally the entire nation was watching. And I had a feeling that the entire continent was watching that game. Did the players feel pressured heading into that encounter? No. No. You thought that you could beat Uruguay? 100%. Because you know what happened there? Uh, the late Nelson Mandela told us what will happen, and it happens. What did he tell you? I went to visit him, and uh, he told us that uh, we are in South Africa, mm -hmm. but we should know that we are not in South Africa. We are in our continent. We are in our land. We are on our land. Yeah. And all the people are supporting us. Mm. Even Bafana Bafana is saying Bagana Bagana. Yep. Even some of the European countries are supporting Ghana. Mm. But he wants to tell us something. If we don't take care, what belongs to us, they will take it from us and give it to the right. But we deserve to pick this cup. We deserve to take this cup. Mm. We have everything to take the cup. But they will take it from us and give it to the, to the whites. Interesting. And now, that is, that is mm -hmm. what happened. Mm. The rules and regulation in football, yeah. when a goalkeeper moves forward and the ball passes through the goalkeeper, if it touches your hand, it's a goal and a, and a red card. Yeah. It's not a pen. If you give a penalty, then that means you are risking. You are giving them a favor. Mm. Do you get it? Mm. If the goalkeeper is in front of you and the ball touches your hand, it's a penalty and a red card. But if the goalkeeper is in like the goalkeeper is in front and the, you are behind the goalkeeper and the ball touches your hand. It's a goal and a red card. So have you seen? So you feel cheated? You, you, or at you the felt moment, cheated? At the moment, we don't know. At the moment, the pressure, we all thought it was a penalty, penalty, penalty. But after everything is gone, we, got, we realize that no. This should have been awarded yes, as a goal. As a goal. And when they pass the ball, that's the, game. That's the end. Now, now, there was also the common belief by most people that if Ghana had beaten Uruguay, we would have gone on to probably beat the Netherlands and 
would have had a legit shot at the World, at the World Cup itself. Were the players themselves thinking that far? Or you were keeping your heads in the moment on that particular yes. game? We, what we always concentrate on is we tackle the game one after the, one after ad, uh, the other. Mm. Mm. If we are coming to tackle you, yeah. we focus on you. If we beat you, we go to the next stage. We are not carried away by, by saying we want to reach here, we want to reach here. We have our goals. Yeah. We have our target before coming to the uh, tournament. Yeah. And if you don't have your target, you don't have anything, then you don't have to be there. Mm. But we have, but when you get to the tournament, anybody yeah. you are going to play with, you have to concentrate and play with the person. When mm -hmm. you finish, you go to another person. That's how they play tournament and that's how you progress. You don't say, I want to progress, so I want to get here. You'll be, you'll be carried away and things will fall apart. Yeah. But on that game, we believe we will win. Because uh, we having, uh, the, uh, I think the first goal, yeah. we had hopes and uh, suddenly they equalized and we had that penalty. And even, uh, it's something else, but uh, we believe that we will win and then... It didn't happen for It you. didn't happen. We can't do anything about it. After that game, I got sick for, for two months. I couldn't do anything. You are kidding? I got sick for two months. What was wrong with you? I don't know. I was not feeling okay. I, I don't know. Even after the game, I, went, I was shivering. I couldn't do anything. Wow. Wow. I mean, when you look back at that tournament now, what are your sentiments towards the 2010 World Cup? Uh, <laughs> uh, there are a lot of things which uh, I didn't expect to, to meet there and uh, how far we went and I don't know. But you see, in terms of any tournament you go, mm -hmm. uh, any outing, like anything which you come out from the tournament, yeah. And uh, after the tournament, mm -hmm. you're supposed to assess yourself and ask yourself that what did you do and uh, what did you do good? Yeah. How did the team do? And uh, did you do well? Did the team do very well? And all sort of that. But I think uh, the whole issue, we, we did our best. I think we said uh, like, we... You equal the record. Yeah, we equal the record, and we're supposed to go further, but we couldn't. We couldn't do it. But it's rather unfortunate we couldn't go. We had it on our hand, we, but we let it go. But there's better luck next time. I think uh, they are they are putting things in place. I think the next generation will do their best because me, I have done mine. I don't know whether I will join the the other groups or not. But for me, I've done mine. Who who was your favorite Black Stars teammate, having played the national team? Uh, my favorite. It's my roommate, Isaac Vosa. Mm. I always do everything with him. Since schools and everything, we met in the national team. I, was, we, I live with him in the room. Any national team collab, me and Vosa. At the field of play, me and Vosa. Yeah. Warm up, me and Vosa. Anything Vosa. Who's the most jovial person or the funniest person in the team? I think Asamajan. Asamajan is a, is a jovial person. Hmm. Talk to me about musical talent or talent outside of football. Who, who is the most talented person outside of football within the camp? Who has some special talent outside football? Asamwa. What's that? Uh, he knows how to sing. He knows how to organize you people to sing. Mm -hmm. I think they they have this. Uh, they they have the the, the heart of the father. I think mm. uh, how to organize, how to pick, bring people together. Yeah. But uh, Asamatu have his style of doing that. Let's talk about your time in Euro. Red Star Belgrade. That's a huge team. Traditional team, <laughs> Champions League team. They're just about the biggest deal when you go to Serbia. How did you learn that deal with Red Star and what are some of your most valuable memories from that Red Star Belgrade spell? Uh, thank you. I think that's my first move and that's my first profession, professional contract. I thank God for that and uh, I thank the people who made the deal possible. I'm so grateful. And uh, I went there, first impression, they saw me and they were disappointed. Seriously, they were disappointed. They thought they, they, they thought they would see somebody big giant. Oh, they were looking for physique. Yes, but this is me. 
And that's how that's why I always say Ghana, we are blessed. We are blessed with this talent. But you are such blessed. a tough tackler though. You, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, cutting everything short. Uh, they accepted the deals and everything. I signed a contract with them and then I went to the food, train one week, two weeks. Mm -hmm. No football. One week, three weeks. And we, we, we the, the club keep on drawing, drawing, drawing. So the management came, called the captain, asked the captain that mm -hmm. ah, we bought a World Cup player. And why is the guy not playing? Yeah. Not knowing the coach have gone there. And they asked the coach, the coach said, I'm not ready to play. If I'm ready, he will tell the management I'm ready to play. Then I'm play that. The captain uh, told the management that the guy is ready, but he doesn't know the reason why the coach doesn't want me to play. Wow. Fine. So what the captain then? Uh, I forgot the name. I forgot the name. I think yeah. Milo. Oh, I, That's I, fine. I, I forgot the name. Yeah. So the captain told them that if you want to witness, mm -hmm. come to the training ground, watch the boy yourself. If he can play, fine. But me, I can't tell you that. Let him yeah. play. They came to the dressing room, uh, the, the, the training, training grounds. Yeah. We train, we are first day, second day, third day. But uh, we were about to play a game that's a derby. Yeah. Has and Kotoko, Rest Our Belgrade and Partizan Belgrade. Yep. That's and a big they, game. Uh, something which I, you know, you know, you, know, you can't, you can't express their feeling, everything. But then I don't know. Mm. I thought it's one of these games. The core camp, yeah. I was not included. I went home. I was sleeping around uh, eight, th eight thirty nine. I had a call from the team manager that I leave. Pick your things. Come, come, yeah. come out. I said no. I'm not included. What am I? I say, I say, come out of your building. I'm coming to pick you. I said, why? He said, come. Then I picked one, two boots. I went out, he picked me. I went to camp. And not knowing, the management went the meeting with uh, the coach. They no, we can bring such a player here for you to keep him uh, outside. If you will let him play, let him sit at the bench. In terms of anything, he can come. I went to camp, everything. I was in the room around uh, 5.36, I had an, I had an helicopter going around, po, 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 po. I think four or five, I said, ah, what is going on? I was then sleeping. Hmm. I was supposed to eat around six, 5.30, six, I was still sleeping. Then I don't know how to speak the language. The culture, everything is different. Hmm. I, I was in the room when the team manager came, Adi, what are you doing? Everybody is there. It's one of the biggest game in Eastern Europe. Yeah. I came with headset. I came out with headset. Everybody, everybody stopped eating and watching me like because everybody was shocked. Yeah. And I don't know what is going on. I, oh, I went and you see when you go there, you're supposed to greet. Yeah. But I don't know how to greet. Then I, I went there and said, good morning. I started going. But the management knows that this is not my coach, and this, so the exercise patient. I think the club president told them that they should, they should come down. I went to do everything. Everybody was watching me, but I was not looking at anybody. I was concentrating on whatever. I ate everything, did everything fine. Yeah. After, I think, five minutes, everybody started eating. They talked to us. Mm -hmm. What they are saying, I don't understand. <laughs> we went, after they give time, they did not speak English to me. Mm -hmm. They give them, I was late then to come and eat brunch. They came to call me the same thing. Then in the meeting, the coach asked me that, Lee, why are you late? Mm -hmm. I said, did you speak English or you speak your language? How will I understand what you're saying? Wow. If you know I can't speak your language. Mm. And why do you accuse me wrongly? Did you speak to me the way I will understand? Yeah. Then don't accuse me. Everybody was quiet. Then the coach changed his mind, put me in the first 11. Wow. Then I don't know. And that was, that was the spark for you? That day, I think the branch, the next uh, one hour, we had in a team meeting. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, they, they, they bring the, you, you can see where my name is. They've canceled somebody's name and put, put my name there. Wow. The team manager told me that the coach intentionally did that. He was angry. He was telling them that he will show me that he is the coach. 
So he cancels the name. They've done the list already. He cancels the name. He put my name there. So they, they bring the paper down. The name, one, Stevan Kovic, Liadi. Everybody was shocked. Then okay. I started doing like this. Yeah, I started, yeah, yeah. Everybody <laughs> was watching me. Then we have yeah. one Ghanaian there. I want Lisa. And he said, me, Ah, I said, I said, I said, No. I said, Yes, Maba. <laughs> then he started smiling. We went, and uh, they give us time. Our, our, the, the, the stadium we are about to, the stadium we are going to use is closer to the camp. It's the same, the yeah. same uh, compound. They give us time to report at the uh, dressing room. Yeah. I slept. You are kidding? I told you, I slept. <laughs> and we'll go to the field 30 minutes uh -huh. to kick off. We have yeah. to go and warm up. Yeah. 40 minutes to kick off. I'm still sleeping. Then the team manager rushed to the room and he saw me there. He said, Lee, why? He said, Lee, you have to come to the dressing room. Mm. The coach came there. He spoke to everybody. I was not there. He, saw, he knew that. I was, he didn't ask of me. My Jesse too was there. So I just shower over there, mm -hmm. wear my boots and everything at the camp, ran to the stadium. Yeah. Met, I, I, I came to put my bag down, take my jersey, put it on, on. Two minutes, we went to the field for warm up. Mm. No ideas, no not, nothing, no everything. We went, I don't know where, who should mark, what to do, I don't know anything. Went to the field, warm up, then I came. Then the team manager called me, mm -hmm. said, come here. You have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. I said, thank you very much. Which is the jersey number I have to mark? He said, this jersey number. If there's corner, you have to mark this one. If there's free kick, you have to mark this one. Wow. Leave the rest for me. I told him that leave the rest for me. That was, the, that was the, my first game, my first deb. Uh, 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 the first the, game was a derby was against Partizan. And that game, I had a contract. That game led to the contract to uh, China. Wow. I was the man of the match then. Then they have two guys in Partizan Belgrade. One was the best striker, mm -hmm. was the goal king and the best striker, and one of the best players in the, in the, in the country. The Claire and one guy. Okay. I, I outplayed them. Wow. You can type Liadi against Partizan. You will see the footage on YouTube. That's my first game. Mm. And everybody was shocked. You, you went ahead to play for a number of teams in, in Eastern Europe. Which, which was your favorite, though? Dynamo Zagreb. Dynamo Zagreb. Yeah. Why? Uh, they are professional. Uh, they, uh, they organize things very well. They know what they want. That's why. They know what they want. They always progress. They always progress. Talk to me about leaving or having your contract terminated. You had your contract terminated at a point. I think you, it was just on ceremony. We just heard that Liadi's contract had been terminated and then he, he didn't have a club. What happened with that situation? Uh, it's between me and uh, the, the president then. Uh, it's something which, uh, as privately, I can I can I can uh, I can say it on camera. Mm. Uh, I I go agreement with him personally. It's not about the club. It's not about me. But, but I went agreement. That was with a Zagreb. Him. Yeah, I went agreement with him personally, yeah. and uh, we, we 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 sort things out. So I think it's between me and the club president and the management. Hmm. Now, tell me about your most valuable memory or your biggest lessons having played in Europe or even in China? What are the most valuable things that you learned? If you have to share it on with some other footballer, you would say that, okay, when I was in Eastern Europe, this and this and this are the memories I hold close to my heart or these are the biggest lessons for me. What were your biggest lessons? Uh, there are a lot of them, a lot of them. Just share three with me, three. Uh, okay, let, let me start from Ghana. Uh, I, I I would say you have to be strong. I I'm, I'm very happy to pass through Abedi Pili because he taught me a lot of things to be strong. 
and the lessons I learned from the Ghana Premier League is you have to face... A when lot you say strong, you mean physically or mentally? Physically and mentally, mentally. everything. Yeah, he will teach you. Okay. He will give it to you. Mm. And uh, secondly, uh, Premier League, there's a lot of things which went on, uh, which if you are not strong, mm -hmm. you will go down. So I always uh, say, I, I, I'm so grateful to Abedi Pili for giving me that. And the memories, I think uh, winning the best defender for two times continuously yeah. is something which I will never, I will never, never, ever forget. Yeah. National team uh, playing in the in, uh, final, yeah. going to the World Cup, mm -hmm. I think the whole history, the whole scenario, I can't point, point fingers, the whole scenario, let me say, being in the yeah. national team, playing it for, or let me say, being, playing for World Cup. Yeah. You can be in the national by playing, not playing in the World Cup. Yeah. A lot of players have played the national team, but, but playing for the, playing the World at the World Cup, I think, is something which I will never forget. Europe, um, I think, uh, being, winning your first trophy in Europe, which was with, your first trophy? Uh, with Dana Mazagreb, I have to... A league title? A league title. Wow. A league title. It's not easy. Continuously two times. Uh, I can't forget it. I can't forget nice. it. What I can't forget is seeing the Adi in Ethiopia. Now, was this there one of those days when we were, you know, it was a news day. I think it was a really slow news day. And then we saw a viral video on Twitter saying that there were Ghanaian players stranded in Ethiopia. They wanted to be airlifted back to Ghana because conditions were harsh. First and foremost, tell me about that particular situation, right? What happened? How did that entire situation transpire up to the point where you and your colleagues felt like, you know what, the situation is extremely bad now. We need to let our people back home know that the situation has to be rescued. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, if somebody had or uh, had that okay, Liade is in Ethiopia or oh, why Ethiopia? Sometimes it's not about uh, the country or it's not about money. It's not about everything, but it's about the legacy you leave when you stop playing football. I always say that I want to make history, so I will be very happy to be part of the people who will make a history in Ethiopia or who will be part like who will say okay, uh, Ethiopia had uh, a World Cup player. And he's the first person who used to play in Ethiopia. And he's the first person who should leave, let me say, a trophy for that club. I always want to make a history. They called me, they put the proposal, I accept, I went there. It was successful. I trained with them, I think, two, three days. What team was this? Uh, Makeli FC. Yeah. And uh, I'm about to sign a contract. As, as I, I was like, I'm sitting here with you. And then the call came. I was about to sign, the guy said, wait. That uh, the league is not can uh, mm -hmm. the, the league is cancelled. You have to hold on with the league. So okay. they said, okay, I should hold on the next day or the next two day. They will make calls and see how best we can sort issues. And uh, we couldn't continue the league anymore. So I have to flew back to the capital. That's Addis Ababa. There are a lot of Ghanaians there who are playing in different, uh, let me say, regions. Yeah. Uh, they closed the league, and uh, everybody is in his clubhouse or apartments waiting that when are they going to open the league and uh, we heard that the league has been cancelled the airport has been closed yeah. and uh, but at that place uh, let me say they didn't they did not close or they did not uh, they, they, they did not close their airport their borders are still open and they are still things are working so we are still uh, say, uh, like calling people, finding out that when are we going to, like when the borders of Ghana is going to open. Mm -hmm. So none. then it got to a state that uh, the government said that it's going to bring people from uh, UK, then stuff, Lebanon. We, ha we saw people came in. Yeah. And uh, we've been there three months. The class there which... Uh, the players were affiliated to. Yes. I think within one month or within one month, we heard that if you are flying maybe from Sunyani to Accra, they will quarantine you in Accra yeah. for let me say 14 days before they will release you. So the players, a lot of them are afraid. So they say, okay, if uh, they will quarantine me, why not? I, I will take this risk to come to Accra, live in Accra, and if the borders reopen in Ghana, then I can easily go. It's not that I will say the border has opened, I'll come to Accra, I'll spend 14 days in Accra. 
before going to my country. So that's the main reason why all the guys came to Addis Ababa. And we are very, we are very close. If I'm living here, we are not, it's not all that far. Mm. So we are in the same, let me say, neighborhood, yeah. renting for three months. No pee, nothing. It, it, it's a little bit uh, disturbing. So we contacted the embassy and told them that this is what is going on. People, yeah. rent are getting finished yeah. and uh, we need an assistant. And uh, he, uh, he said, okay, they will get back to us. Then they get back to us that we should have had a meeting. We, had, we went to the meeting and uh, he said that they make a lot of calls, but uh, the government having approved that we should come, they should do something for us. Yeah. So they don't have anything to do. Then we told them that a lot of people are short of uh, cash. cash and uh, they have to do something. We are having, we, we are having our own return ticket. Yeah. Previously, the, the, the club sought a lot of people, they pay them out that they should go, yeah. they can go to their family. So the club, they know that the players are in Addis Ababa, yeah. waiting for the uh, borders, to, borders open. to open to go. So they can't do anything for you again, unless you bring out another issue. The second meeting with uh, the councillor, he said that he can't do anything. So anything we can do mm -hmm. for the government to hear our cry is up to us, but them, they can't do anything. Okay, we say, okay, then what can we do? For me, they, they brought a, a, a solution that we can take cargo flight for $2,000. You, you sit in the cargo. But I can't go and leave the rest of them there. Because for me, for me I'm a senior guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, you being with the younger ones, leaving them there, it's not, it's not fair. If they appoint you to be a leader or they see you to be a leader, leader. You, you, you can't leave them alone. Uh, back so i have to i have to be with them do the video with them and hold, hold on a second there how did you feel about the Ghanaian consulate asking you to pay close to two thousand dollars to be put on a cargo plane how, how did you you guys feel generally about from the that? like uh we, we felt disappointed i think if we, we should like they, they they should come out earlier a lot of them have money to pay but they use all the money on rent, food, taxes and stuff. And all the three months, the food, the money will go. And at the point, mm -hmm. the money has finished. So they can afford that 2000 So are you saying that even if you had 2000 or if they had 2000 they would have paid to be on a cargo plane? They yeah. just cared about coming home? They, they just want to come home. Because one, uh, there's a little bit confusion in the country, especially where we are living. Because there's one uh, musician which were, were, were killed and it, it tends to travel war well because he's an, let me say he's an Ewe and the, the Ewe say is the Ashantis who kills the, uh, the uh, let me say. There was some unrest there. Yes, so they were fight and uh, the uh, internet and everything went off for a month mm. and you, it, it, it's serious. Wow. It's serious. They can cut internet, you, no internet connection, nothing light went off everything so it was a little bit scary the people who were saved is the ambassadors and stuff who were saved but we the people who are living in the country or living in town we're living at the mercy of the people yes and then let me say there are a lot of people who knows the guys so mm -hmm. sometimes i i witnessed that one day we went to the airport we went like we went there to go and check uh, our tickets and stuff yeah. and we were coming home mm -hmm. and what i saw i can't explain it it was like uh, I, I would say we two cents. People are holding stick, and uh, they were beating or vandalizing other people. I always wish that Ghana we shouldn't experience this again because uh, I, I had like hmm. uh, things have happened for in Ghana before. But to witness a coup or war yeah. or tribal war, I think is I, I, it's not good. It's not it's not good sign. I'm telling you, it's yeah. not. We can't sit here and chat. We can't. You can't do anything. It's very, it's dangerous, mm -hmm. and we have to avoid this. It will not help the nation. It will not help anybody. Because what I saw with yeah. my eye, I didn't believe it. But the hope I have in me is, yeah. the time we were, the taxi was approaching the people. Yeah. They were giving us way yeah. to pass, and the driver is talking to them in their language. Okay. They have different languages. You see, maybe you've met these Awosa people, yeah. and if you cannot speak Awosa, what will happen? And maybe you are carrying the foreigners, which yeah. are also finding their way to go to their uh, home. Yeah. What will happen? You see how? It's, it's, it's not easy. 
And so we're making the video, or we're doing the video. I think some part is, is wrong, some part is good. You're supposed to consult people before doing I mean, the that video. was really the reason why you ended up coming back. Because yes. everybody was alarmed, the, Ghanaians were... We were, we were hurt There's, to see our own Yeah, yeah there, were, there were a lot of people who called me who said I shouldn't lead the group to do the video because uh, the name and the things I have or like the pedigree I have, I don't have to lead. I said, no, I can't leave my people because if people, doesn't, if people did not see me in the video, they would think it's no one normal uh, Ghanaian place. But if they see the, uh, people like That's me... That's definitely true. Yes, they will pay attention. And even the ambassador told me that, ah, you know, you are kind of person and you did not tell me. I said, I can't come here and tell you I'm this and this and this. No, 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 no. I have to humble myself, lead my people, come to you, yeah. humble ourselves, plead to you to help us because you are representing us here. Yeah. Definitely. But after everything, I think he had calls from Ghana yeah. ministries, office of the president. Yeah. Then he came back to us. He called us and said, oh, no, I'm sorry. Let's do this. Let's do this. And we organized and we came. I think uh, they did well. But all the same, we have to pay for it to come. <laughs> I'll get to that in a bit. But there's a few details I want to pick from that situation. When you made the video, you people said that you had a few days for your resident permit in Ethiopia to expire. Of course. And then you would become illegal immigrants at the time. Of course. Did that actually happen? Tell I'm, me, tell I'm me telling you, that. the last day we're supposed to move, the last day, we, we changed our tickets passing through Togo. Mm -hmm. And we heard Togo have opened their border, so we changed our ticket with the airline. They are said we pay the... the so you people didn't overstay? We overstayed. By how many days? I think one week. And we went and paid $50, $50. For exit visa. Hmm. And the day we did the exit visa, we were supposed to leave that night. And we had a message yeah. that day after the after the immigration, we had a message that the play had been cancelled. Wow. You didn't you didn't encounter any immigration problems though? Like no. authorities of Ethiopia didn't disturb you for overstaying? No, there's a procedure when that if you overstayed, this is the amount you are going to pay. So if you have the money, you just pay. They give you exit visa, you go. But so if that's what happened. Yes, if you don't have the money, then, that's then the embassy comes in, comes in and help you to pay. Mm. There, if you overstay, nobody will worry you. But you have to pay before going out. If you don't pay, you stay in the country for the rest of your life. Tell me about how much of a role the GFA and a body like the PFAG, who are player welfare people, played in getting you back into the country. I will say I will salute them and then, then I will say uh, good work done. I think the office of the president also play a major role. The ministry also play a major role. Uh, there's one protocol officer who is in uh, GFA, Alex Asante. Yeah. I salute him. He deserves the job. He knows. He has experience. He always called me personally, asked me, Lydia Neko, Le Madrin. He, he said that you can give, giving you updates he, yeah, on everything. Yeah, he, you can give somebody a, a yeah. job, but if he doesn't have the experience yeah. to do that, that passion to do the job, he can do, but he will not reach anybody. I'm telling you, the people who flew from Ethiopia to this yeah. place, everybody was happy with Alex Asante because he always call and anytime he calls me, I put it on speaker mm -hmm. so everybody knows what is going on because. I don't want to hear something and come and tell you. Your sister, Munti wa masumi diye kusu. Le ya yesi o ya yesi o. If ya kodi letter free how ya da ben amoba ni infanche letter no. It was not easy. Being like to be a leader is not easy. I've 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 been under a lot of people, starting from Maestro Abedi Pele, Monetary, John Mensah, Stephen Apia, and so I've been under people, but it's not easy. I heard Montari was telling me, Sule Montari was telling yeah. me that uh, Sami Kofo always fight for them in the national team. So that has entered inside my head that, you know, mm -hmm. I have to fight for the younger ones so that tomorrow they, are, they can also fight for the, uh, the, the, the junior. What was your biggest lesson from that entire episode? And my biggest lesson is anyone who travels, it's not only the footballers, anyone who travels to any country, report yourself to uh, the ambassador or any embassy, like Ghana embassy, they just report to serve them for them to know that you are there. So in terms of anything, uh, they will look for you. But if you haven't done that, uh, to be a little bit disturbing, because if there's something and uh, the country or the president is calling, oh, 
we heard something is going on here. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you have anybody there who we can yeah. help? They will say no because they don't know you are there. But if mm -hmm. you've reported, they know you are living here, you are living here, they can easily locate you and then, then, then help you out. Let's, let's talk about a few random football stuff to round this up. First <laughs> up on my list, let's talk about Thomas Party to Arsenal. It's been rolling for like close to three months now. There are those who say that Atletico are at the top, they play in the Champions League, he's, he's already established there, he shouldn't move. There are those who say that the Premier League is the biggest platform to play on and so Thomas should make the jump. How do you feel about that? I have been in his shoes before and uh, I believe that he's a professional and have people around him who always guide him and give him uh, advice. Yeah. He should listen to the advice and believe in himself. If you want to move, fine. I, I embrace it. If you want to stay, fine, I embrace it because Football is happiness. You're supposed to be happy and you can bring everything out of you. If he will go to Arsenal mm -hmm. and he will be happy, have a play time, yeah. he should go. They all, we are all playing football. Mm. If he will, he will stay in uh, yeah. Atletico, he will be happy and get his money. He should, really, he should stay there and play his football. Because after football, they'll ask you, what have you done? After football, what did you do? There are a lot of great talent who are better than Abedi Pele, Tony Boas. Where are they? Abu Imoro, then you can see their documentary and stuff yeah. that they, 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 they follow a certain group and they did not end up very well. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not wishing that, I'm not saying that I'm happy for them. Yeah. I'm not happy that they've passed through that. But this is a lesson for us also not to follow the, those two footsteps. Mm. There are a lot of players who have played big big clubs but see right now they don't have anything and where the level they are they should be more than that so mm. we have to learn from those people get your money make your name and live largely like Sami Kufo is living wherever he is mm. you can't talk about him yeah. there are a lot of guys which have not gone to the top but they're also living good mm. God in our tram we have his own academy have you have everything doing well for himself. He's doing every well so you're supposed to learn from these people like you see there, there are mistakes they've done. And if you go closer to them, they will tell you. If you talk to them, they will tell you, we made this mistake, we didn't make this mistake. We don't want you to do the same mistake. Yeah. So you, you have to be very, very careful. Make the, any chance which come, yeah. make good use of it and take your money. There you go. Let me ask you, between Messi and Ronaldo, who, who do you think is the better player? They are all good. They no, are all fantastic. No, no, you like one of them? Uh, listen. If, if you are, no, let, 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 me, let me rephrase the question. Yeah. If you were a coach, and you were given the option. You, you can't back out of it. You can't pick both of them. Okay. You have to pick either or Messi to put in your team. Who would you prefer? It will depend on the position I'm looking for. <laughs> I mean, football, I can't condemn anybody. They are good players. Yeah. But it will depend on the position I'm looking for. If I'm looking for a playmaker, mm -hmm. a person who can dribble from box to box, a player who like can create something for me, I'll go in for Messi. But mm. if I'm looking for a player who is hungry for goal, who can do everything to get goal, who somebody can give him pass to score, yeah. I'll go for uh, 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 Ronaldo. So what you are saying is that Ronaldo and Messi are at par? They, 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 you see, you, you can't compare them because this one works differently, this one too works differently. Football is division of labour. Everybody has his job to do. You can't tell Ronaldinho or uh, 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 Messi to go and play defence. You can do that. How can you compare Messi and uh, Piqué? Mm. It's bo too bo okay. They are all playing up front. Yeah, but, but Messi is almost like a striker now. Yes, but he's not a typical striker. They have typical striker, and they have somebody who is the ball juggler, yeah. who can create. He can do everything. He can he can do something for you to be happy. Mm. Ronaldo ha have the power, pay the pace, yeah. the hunger to score. Yeah. He can do everything to score. Messi can score a nice goal, yeah. but the goals Ronaldo will score, Messi will make it very nice. How do you feel about Messi deciding to leave Barcelona after all these years and then performing a U-turn to say that, you know what, I don't want to take my team to court, so I'll play one more season? Uh, maybe he has... Uh, I don't know, but for me what I think is he has to really think about his decision and he knows that Barcelona has given him him all what he wants in life mm. uh, from childhood up to this level and if the people are begging you 
to do something. You have to reconsider our decision and say something. Were you shocked though? Were you shocked? I'm when not shocked. I'm not, even if it's me, I don't know. Maybe I will do the same or I will change my mind. But I respect his decision and then and I embrace it. I, I salute him for that because the worst which is coming out from him is telling you people that he will not be ungrateful because mm -hmm. this is our people. This is our my family which has fed me from. Uh, let me say amateur yeah. to this level and I'll leave them in this way no I won't do that so I respect his decision what's your next likely destination as a footballer uh, football is like a pastoral job anywhere God will lead you to you have to go anywhere God says Lee you have not finished the Malik, work where have the calls been coming from I'm sure you've had a host uh, there's, of there's, calls. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of calls which are currently like which I've been in, and uh, I think Ash Good called me. Uh, Kotoko and uh, Accra and some folk. We're still talking. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what will, what will come on. I me, mean, I don't care whether it's House of Folk or uh, Kotoko. Man, doors are always open. Any, anything. Mm. Just that uh, we have to agree on the, our terms and, and then go. I believe and I will be very happy that the younger ones will learn from me, whatever about Kwao, they will learn. But there are a lot of people who came to the locals and they couldn't make yeah. it. I also, I have also learned from whatever they've, uh, they passed through and they couldn't make it. And I think uh, that mentality and that thing is supposed to change for us to embrace our own. Because the people who are traveling outside, they are still our brothers and they are still mm -hmm. playing. They still have the experience to teach the young ones. So if we are not embracing them or we are not letting them come out, come back to come and teach yeah. the younger ones. How can you go there and perform? Because you have to learn it from here before you go there. Final question, final question. If you had your own way and you could have picked one league to have played in, what would have been your dream league to have played in? A dream league, Spanish. Why? Because I, I love the way they play. They don't just kick the ball, they play possession game. And I love their play. You know that all the leagues are not good. They are equally good, but this is what I love and this is what I like, so Spanish league. You got the chance to play in China, you played in Croatia, you played in Serbia, but what would have been your dream league to have featured in? I think it would be Spanish league. Why? Because uh, I love the way they play. They, don't, they just don't balloon the ball, tactical play, they just put the ball on the fold and play. So I love the way they play and I love to play with, uh, in those leagues. Yeah, I'm not saying that those, uh, the other leagues are not good. Mm. You have a core league which are very good. Italian, Syria, Gen German Bondos, Liga, and uh, all English Premier League. They are all good, but for me, I prefer Spanish. Just because I love the way they play. Interesting. We, we've digested everything we could about football. Most importantly for me, I found out today that you don't have any Japanese lineage despite being called Lee, so <laughs> I'm happy. I appreciate the time taken to speak to us. You're welcome. Uh, I, I'm also happy to be here. I'm happy to share my story with you. And I know a lot of people will learn from it, and then uh, God bless you all. So you heard Lee Adi there, played for Red Star Belgrade, played for Dinamo Zagreb, Black Stars defender featured in the World Cup. He's done it all, he's seen it all. And these are the stories that we tell on the tracker. Same time next week, we'll be back here.